Good evening and welcome back to another edition of the Beaver Sports Show. I'm Jenna Lane. I'm Josh Warden. And I'm Jake McGrady. Tonight we have a day in the life of an OSU football player as well as our round uh, pro talk and much more. May 3rd is Beaver football's official spring game at 1 o'clock p.m. We had Katie Beasley follow our very own Tyler Anderson and Teron Ward in our newest segment, A Day in the Life. Team. Hi, my name is Tyler Anderson. I'm number 33 on the uh, football team. I'm a NMC New Media Communications major. I'm a senior. My major is New Media Communications, and I'm a senior here. Normal day, I wake up, morning shower, uh, wake me up, uh, head over to Valley. We have breakfast, um, we have meetings, we have practice, and then we have class. And after class, we probably have some more meetings, and then um, Come back home, relax, do some homework, and just chill. This is a blue roll. Hey, are uh, these games? My earrings? No, these ones. Are they match? No, yeah. That's pink. Yeah. So no, I don't match. Okay. I'm colorblind. <laughs> That's why. I just a lot of people think that football players are mean just because we walk around um, and we're probably not smiling just because we got done with workouts, um, probably unhappy because we're sweating running the class or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think a lot of people around campus think that we're not very nice, but I think that's the complete opposite because if you hung out with us for more than 10 minutes, then you see that we're not. <laughs> I think over these last four years, we got really, really close. Sometimes too close. Yeah. I yeah. Sometimes I know what he's thinking. Do you have rehab to do? Yeah, a little bit. No, I'm going to go eat. I'm going to go eat. We have our nutrition cards right here. Have to follow a strict diet. Usually get the same thing every morning. I usually don't eat I usually don't eat this much, but I really didn't see the omelets. And so I'm not gonna eat the eggs here. But I love crisp biscuits and gravy. No. I usually have a lot of friends here. I knew my whole life growing up in a football family. Um, basically, basically following my brother's footsteps. He played football at an early age. I started playing football at like seven, eight. And it was always after football games on Saturday, we would go home and watch college football. On Sundays, we would watch pro football. Monday nights, we'd watch pro football. So football has always been something that's really been serious and a big part of my life. So playing at the collegiate level wasn't even a question. It was like, more of a goal and something I want to accomplish, and uh, I did that. This is class time. Uh, when we get out, about to go learn some theory about the media. Um, <laughs> tune in about 1:20 when we go back to Valley and eat lunch. We eat lunch. So. play video games, uh, hang out with my friends, uh, go play basketball, go to Dixon, hang out, um, eat. Hopefully I, I see myself in the NFL making some money, but yeah. that's my goal to be... You can watch the full-length video with Teron and Tyler on our YouTube channel, KBVR26. 
Open this past summer, the OSU basketball facility is the most recent addition to Oregon State's athletic facilities. To break down what really happens in the gym, here is Joel Dooling and Samantha Signer. Hey, I'm Samantha Signer, a sophomore forward on the Oregon State women's basketball team, and we're here outside our brand new practice facility that was completed in June of last year. So I'm going to take you guys on a quick tour through it. Welcome to the women's basketball court. Uh, this is where all the magic happens. It was really cool. Our coaches, they actually got to design the graphics and the color scheme that went into this court. So ours is slightly different than the men's, which is upstairs. Um, we generally practice here most of the time. And we practice probably in Gill one or two days before our games. So this is our home. So this is our training room, where our trainer, Jason, will generally tape us before practice or treat us uh, after if we have any injuries. But let's take a quick peek at our locker room. So this is one of two locker rooms that we have. Um, the other one in Gill is where we keep most of our stuff, but here we have all our practice gear, which gets washed every day after practice. And then we just come pick it up and head out to the court. Um, back here we have our little meeting area uh, slash hangout. We have a TV and stuff, so people would come back here and do homework or just sit and relax. This is the second floor of the basketball center. All our coaches' offices are up here, along with our video coordinator and then our director of operations. So this is our meeting room where we watch our film. So let's take a quick look inside. So this is our film room. We come in here and watch uh, film on the other team we scout. We'll generally scout about three days in advance. So that's the grand tour of the basketball center. Hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for coming. We are going to take a quick break, but when we return, we have OSU students learning from the Pac-12 networks as well as our weekend versus the Ducks. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Beaver Sports Show. This weekend, our own students got to learn and interact with the pros of the Pac-12 Network. Take a look. Hi, my name is Sarah Backerman. I am a production manager with the Pac-12 Networks. Today, we came out to Oregon State to do student training for the Pac-12 to encourage students to get involved in sports broadcasting and to offer them exposure into our productions. Uh, today, Lily came out with me to help train. I'm Lily Yunker. I'm another production manager at Pac-12 Networks based in San Francisco and I work on all of the remote operations for Oregon State University and University of Oregon and also our mountain schools and so I came out here to join Sarah and um, engage our students and talk to them about the roles that we hire and also teach them the ins and outs of our remote production setup. So walking around our production trucks, um, our camera positions, learning about the different cables that we use, the different roles that we hire. We walked them through a full day, you know, they got to see both a full production and what we call a multi-cam production. We had two different trucks here. Uh, they got to work with our EICs, the engineers on those trucks, uh, to build a hard camera and to practice operating a handheld camera on their shoulders. So all in all, we think it was a great day for them to get some experience and exposure and for us to look for potential hires, you know, in future years. And there's an operator that is assigned to each of the machines and is certain, you know, certain cameras, and then they essentially, well, one is a replay operator, so one.
This past weekend, the Beavers swept the U of O Ducks in the Civil War. Game one of three already made history as Ben Wetzler moved into the spot of winningest pitcher here at OSU with 31 wins overall. Before Friday, he was tied with Ken Noble, who won 30 games from 1975 to 1978. Wetzler, Wetzler is now 16 and two all time at Goss Stadium. The Beavers won the first game with a three to one victory. The Beavers took game two after rallying four runs in the bottom of the eighth, making it 4-1, and would win the game 4-2 after UO collected one run in the ninth, but couldn't make the comeback as junior Dylan Davis collected two hits and two RBIs. The last game was no contest as Jace Fry had 11 strikeouts, which was a career high for the junior as the Beavers won the game 7-1. OSU is officially first in the Pac-12 with a record of 31-8 and 14-4 in conference play. We are going to take a quick break, but when we return, we review softball's last home games as well as our opinions on the NBA playoffs. Thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put a little bit about women's softball. This past weekend, the softball team had a three-game home set against the Washington Huskies. The Beavers took a crushing blow, losing the series, getting swept in the process. The 11th-ranked Huskies beat the Beavs in a game of 1-6-2, but the Beavs took an early lead, getting, getting a run going in the second inning, but at the top of the fourth, the Huskies collected five runs and their last in the fifth. With an 11-1 loss Saturday... The Beavers wouldn't stop or junior C.J. Chiricchino from making an amazing diving catch in the game as well as getting a home run. Designated player Alexis Gonzalez entered the game with three home runs. She decided why not add a fourth in the bottom of the sixth inning, but the Beavers did end up losing 10-2. The Beavers bounced back with a doubleheader on Tuesday as they took on the Portland, Portland State Vikings. The Beavers started out with a bang, scoring three runs in the first inning. The Beavers started the game with a walk from sophomore Corey Nishitomi, and she was brought in later by a triple from center fielder Danny Gilmore. The Beavers' biggest surge happened in the fourth inning when they brought in 10 runs. The Beavers had a pair of 14 hit games, and in one game, Corey Nishitomi and Danny Gilmore led the team with three hits and Kylie Padilla with two. And it was the last home game for seniors Isabel Bayatolia and Hannah Bushka, along with Amanda Nydek and Bailey News. The Beavs took the first game 13-1. C.J. Chiricchino continued her great play in Game 2, hitting a pair of doubles in the contest. Hannah Bushka stepped up in the second game, going 2-3, for three, scoring a run in RBI as well as adding a double. Ya Garcia moved within one hit of 100 for her career, and OSU had four players with two hits apiece, giving OSU a 6-3 victory over the Vikings. The softball team heads to Las Vegas May 3rd and 4th, finishing the regular season at Stanford May 8th through the 10th. So now let's go ahead and go playoff into time. playoff talk, all that. So, so do we want to start off with the Blazers and the Rockets I, I, and everything going fitting. on there? It's only fitting. How could you not? The Rockets pulling it out last night ended up pulling away towards the end. Was it 10 point? With a victory. shocking display of defense for once by everyone. It was, that was not, definitely not what the Rockets will do on a normal basis, especially with James Harden. But Jeremy Lin pulling it out. I had, I had to mention Jeremy Lin. But I'll give that one I, okay. the, the Blazers, I think, will pull it out in Game six. Portland. I mean, you have to Absolutely. Jack Lamb tomorrow night at 730. You can't go home. Yeah. And even LaMarcus was, like, quoted he was saying, just, he's yeah. like, you, well, he was like, you know, this is our home. We play well at home. Like, we're, exactly. we got this one in the bag. And, you know, obviously the last game with only eight points, he really didn't come out and, you know, like – it was Wesley Matthews and Wesley, Wesley Damian who really yeah. pulled through for the team. But I almost, I almost think that it was the Rockets are almost heated by whatever Mo Williams <laughs> could have possibly said yeah. to stir up some drama. It does drama. seem like he did. Yeah, he stirred up the energy for them, that's for sure, whatever he said. He and Chandler Parsons were, were going at it. Parsons was having a great game, especially the beginning. I think overall, the fact that the, Be uh, the Beavers, the Blazers, <laughs> or the Beavers, if the Beavers won this, this series, if the Blazers got, already got two games in Houston, the Blazers didn't even have that great of a road record this no, season. Not so right. the fact that they got two at the beginning. Especially in Houston, too. Yeah, so the fact that they didn't get uh, game five in Houston, it's yeah. all right. They got the home game, and I still have confidence, even if they don't get it in Portland, they still have a shot game seven back in Texas. I want that, though. Absolutely. We'll see I know. That Hopefully happens. that won't happen, but if right. it does. Worst case scenario. Exactly. Do you see LaMarcus Aldridge going back off for 40 points again like he did in the first couple of games? Or is it going to be 40. Batum? 
Is it going to be Wesley Matthews? I think, I, think could, Wesley. I think it could possibly make a bounce back just because he had those really two high-scoring games, and then it mm -hmm. kind of dropped off after that. And I think, especially after last night, he's like kind of like, okay, I needed to get it. I need to get it together. Yeah, so totally I think he'll pull through. But that's a wrap up for another edition of the Beaver Sports Show. Once again, I'm Jenna Lade, and I'm Jake McGrady, and I'm Josh Warden. And if only to appease our great producer James Chavez, go Blazers.